I'm Johnny, and this is my North Beach. It's Easter, so I'm making a traditional Easter entree. I'm making a bacchio. A bacchio is a roasted baby spring lamb. When I was a kid, I'd go with my father and my uh, uncle, and we'd go up northern Jersey to a farm. And they'd uh, look at the herd of uh, sheep, and they'd pick one that they really liked. They tied it up with a rope down in the basement, and my, my sister and I would go down and play with it for a couple of days. All of a sudden, we'd go down the next day to play with the, the little baby lamb, and it'd be gone. Who the hell knew where it went? After we discovered what happened to the little baby lamb, we stopped eating that on Easter. My mother had to make something else until we uh, recovered. But now I'm back to eating it, so that's what I'm making today. A bacchio, the way my mother used to make it. Okay, let me show you the ingredients we're working with today. La Mola extra virgin olive oil, white vinegar, white wine, Sicilian sea salt, and black pepper, anchovies, garlic, rosemary, Yukon gold potatoes, and baby spring lamb. I parboiled these potatoes, right? Just put them in a pot with water, bring it up to a boil for about three minutes, take them out, let them cool, and then I'm just gonna peel them. And the reason I parboil them is because I wanna give them a head start. Then I'm going to uh, cut the potato in half, and we're going to want pretty big pieces. So I'm going to cut it in half, and then each half I'm going to quarter. And just put them in your pan. I'm going to drizzle these with some uh, extra virgin olive oil, sea salt. And you want to give it a pretty good sprinkle of salt. Don't be cheap with it. And the same for finely grated black pepper. Then we're just going to Mix these up, and I'm going to spread these out because I want them to bake. I don't want them to steam, so I want to have some room. So let me set these right up here. I got my oven going at about 425. I made some paste out of rosemary and garlic and white wine vinegar, but I think I'm going to need a little bit more. So I'm going to take a couple of cloves of garlic, a little baboom action to get rid of the paper. I'm going to take some of these leaves off the stem here. Let me give this a dice. And now I'll just mince this. I think that's going to do it for me. These are uh, anchovies that are packed in oil. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of anchovies, but really this is an excellent flavoring ingredient. It's an umami. It adds uh, another dimension. And I should have really chopped this with the garlic and the, uh, and the rosemary. I'm making extra work for myself. So let me take a couple of these. And when these hit the heat, they're going to disintegrate. So I don't have to be as uh, careful with the size of these. So I just want to break this down a little bit. So let me get this in here. Next ingredient. So I'll put about a uh, tablespoon of white vinegar in there. And this is going to help me make a paste. Breast of baby lamb. So this is, you know, this is the, the part of the animal from here. And when I cut it, I'm going to cut it into individual servings. So like this end, I'll probably give three of these ribs. These are a little bigger. I'll give two. I'll give two. And then I'll give three. I'm going to get through the bone down this way. I'm going to cut down. When I hit that bone, I'm just going to cleave it. You can actually just use a chef's knife also. So I'm going to, this is a small piece. I'm going to give that, I'm going to portion this at two. See, and you can just go through it that way also. So if you can't get this and still want to make a bacchio, uh, spring lamb, you can use chops. I had my butcher cut these in a single serving. You got a nice piece of meat there and two ribs. We're going to give these salt on both sides, freshly grated ground uh, black pepper. So let me just turn these over quickly and we'll do the other side. So I'm going to put that on uh, at high. I'm going to add some extra virgin olive oil in here. And now I want to flavor this oil. So I'm going to put in a couple of whole branches of rosemary. And this is just some garlic that I smashed. It's a technique I use often with garlic and uh, trying to infuse oil, just til tilt the pan like this. So I'm just going to take these out. Don't need them anymore. They've done their job. And I'm going to start adding the, the spring lamb. And I may have to cook this in batches. Again, I'm only putting it in here to brown it. 
So let's go with these three pieces. I think these are uh, ready to turn. I just want to get a, a little bit of a crust going on that side. Turn them over, do the same thing on the other side. Here's the last piece of the breast. Brown that up. Now here are these the chops now. So I want to get a crust on these also. <laughs> Okay, so again, don't crowd them in your roasting pan. Give them plenty of room. Grab my white wine, and I'm going to put that in here. You want to pick up all of those brown bits on the bottom. Watch yourself. So I'm burning off the alcohol here, but I'm picking up all that flavor from the uh, browning of the lamb. So we're just going to add that. Let's get this into the bottom of the oven because I got the potatoes on the top. Let me take these out and turn them over so they're going to cook evenly, get golden on both sides. So the uh, lamb is in the oven and depending on your cut, uh, that's how long you'll have to keep it in. For example, the, if you're using those chops, those double chops like I did, they'll probably be in there maybe about an hour or so, but the way you're gonna know they're done is to use an internal thermometer. And when it gets to about 140 degrees and you like them medium, medium rare, uh, that's when you should take them out. The breast, on the other hand, you have to treat like you would treat any, any rib. So for pork ribs, for these baby lamb ribs, the test for doneness is going to be when they're fork tender, when that meat is just starting to fall off the bone. That could take a couple of hours. And I'm gonna let the temperature come down to 375 to finish cooking. Here's my lamb. So I'm gonna finish the dish by adding the uh, paste of rosemary and garlic that I made. And if some of it goes in, the, uh, in there, it's fine in the bottom because that's going to end up being our juice, our gravy. And I'm going to grab the potatoes out of the oven now. Marry those two things together. Beautiful. Get this back in the oven. Get these two things milled. Just take a few minutes. So our lamb, our baby lamb, both the chops and the breast pieces, the riblets, have created a really nice crust. The potatoes have absorbed a little bit of the gravy, and look, we're gonna have some pan gravy to spoon over everything. I'm gonna go over here to this chop. Oh my God. We're gonna have some special episodes for Easter, so you don't wanna miss them. Make sure you subscribe, just click here. Okay, now that I've finished chewing, let me tell you a story that I heard about a week ago. It's a story that comes from New Jersey. So they were having the Sunday Mass, and the priest was uh, giving his sermon, his homily was about the resurrection. And this particular pre priest, as was his custom, after he got done preaching to the adults, he always invites all the kids in the congregation to come and sit on the steps leading up to the altar. So he says to the little kids, you heard me talking to your parents about the resurrection. Does anybody know what the resurrection is? So this one little kid about three or four years old is waving his hand, waving his hand, father, father. I'm not sure if I know what resurrection means, but I think if it lasts more than four hours, you're supposed to call your doctor. <laughs>